Welcome to another episode of How To Tuesday, where I, as a C6 quadriplegic, show you how I get things done. Today, we're gonna go over transfers. This is one of my weaker points that I'm still working on, getting better with, but I've always kind of struggled with transfers. So I figured out a way that I can do it, but it's not the best, and I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that can do it a lot better than I can. But I figured out it, so hopefully it can help you. As always, remember to like, subscribe, and follow us on all of our social media. I start off always by dropping both my feet to the ground, and I'll spasm. The way I'm able to transfer and move myself is by locking out my arms and using my shoulders and also my upper body. I'm paralyzed from the chest down, so I use what function I have on my upper body to help me move around. So I just kind of skew over to the edge of the, of the bed and I angle my chair, if you can see, so that I'm not trying to go over my tire and I have as little room that I have to make it over as possible. I use my legs as leverage, so I place them in different places that I've found that just work better for me. Um, a lot of people, a lot of other quadriplegics will try to pop up and get a good twist this way. I've never been very good at that and so I mostly slide or try to angle myself back and pop up to go backwards and I'll show you how here. So I'm twisted pretty good and I have one of my butt cheeks on the bed. So now I can just kind of angle my arms here, my arms get locked out and then I just pop up and I fall down and repeat the process. So when I'm here, I'm just using my shoulders to get up as high as I can and just kind of scoot back. Once I'm on the bed, easiest way I found to get back on the bed is I hook underneath my leg and then I will put, kind of fall back and put one of my legs up on my chair. A lot of times my other leg will follow, which is part of the spasm. And so that's nice. But if not, I'll just put one leg up on the chair and then hook underneath the other leg and fall back. But once I'm in this position, I'll just take off my shoes and socks because they don't slide easily on the bed. So that's more convenient. And then just kind of roll over here. Push my legs down. Once I am in this position, I try to hook underneath my leg and use my elbow to kind of prop me up here. And then I throw my arms to get momentum because that's the best way to get momentum without core. So I'll kind of do that simultaneously. And then I hook under here and use my biceps to pull me up. Once in this position, same thing, lock out my arms, oops, pop over. It's a lot of, a lot of sliding, and that's where I said I'm working on getting stronger. I can pop a little bit better, get more of a, a push and a twist, but here we are. Now it's time to get back in the chair. One thing you may notice is I always have my shoes on when I'm doing a transfer. This is because they grip a lot better than socks or no shoes. So it helps me to keep my legs from sliding out and then I can use them bent as a pivot. I, like I said, kind of suck at transfers. And so the popping up part's been really difficult for me for a long time. Still working on that, but I had, had to figure out different ways of getting onto objects like my chair that are prone to moving without 
them actually moving and sliding out from underneath me. So here's the technique I use. Number one, because my cushion will slide often, so I just grab this and bring it over. Oops, too much. And then I get this to a point where it's close enough that, again, I'm not trying to get over the wheel here, but I've got the lowest point of contact for me to get onto the chair. I put my foot up on the foot plate. I can do it. Once my foot's on the foot plate, it leaves my leg up a little bit higher and I'll just keep my butt, it'll, it'll allow my butt and leg to stay higher when I transfer. So I realized if I can kind of hook on this side of my wheelchair while I just slide across, then it will keep my wheelchair from moving or sliding on me. Otherwise it will easily go like this and create a big gap here which I'll fall underneath and that's no good for anyone. I lean all the way forward, which just lifts up my butt and helps me slide across and I don't have to necessarily pop up. Because when I pop up, I don't really get up very high. Now I'm on the chair. You may notice while I'm moving and doing other things that my legs start bouncing or twitching or whatever. And these are all spasms that are uncontrolled by me. So they're involuntary, they just kind of do their own thing. Sometimes I can do things to cause the spasm to happen, but for the most part, I can't do it. But here's an example of when I can make a spasm happen. This is called clonus and it's when your leg starts bouncing. So I cause a stretch in my calf now my leg bounces. Spasm is triggered or caused by an outside force that reacts to your body and your body and your brain can't tell your body not to do that action. For example, when I was bouncing my leg, it sent a signal up to my brain that said there was a stretch, should we bounce or not? And because my brain can't communicate past the break, it sent the signal back down and my leg just started bouncing involuntarily. For example, a hose, when it's kinked, has water go up to the kink, but it can't get past the kink, so the water just has to go back out the other way. Thanks for watching. As always, like and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and even our TikTok channel where we post funny dances. Thanks for watching again, and I think you're awesome. Zippity-doo-dah. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.